Hey guys, I'm Tom, a tech chef, and I've got a whole bunch of phones here that all cost under or around the £200 mark. And I'll put links to everything I talk about and show you today in the description below if you want to check them out. Uh, but let's crack on, and in no particular order, let's start with the Poco X3 NFC, this guy. It's right at the top of our £200 budget, but you get so much for your money, particularly if you're into your gaming. The Snapdragon 732G chip is one of the fastest in this price range, and I can comfortably play Fortnite and COD on this. Not that I'm any good though. And also, the big 6.67 inch Full HD Plus screen has a 120Hz refresh rate, so everything you do, whether it's just swapping around or playing games that support it, feels a whole lot smoother on this. Battery life is also really good on this thing. We get a pretty hefty 5160 milliamp hour battery, which is I think the second biggest on test today. Uh, so it'll last you two days pretty easily. Downsides, well, it might not even be a problem for you, but it is quite a big phone with that, as I say, big 6.67 inch screen, and it is quite a hefty guy. So uh, not the smallest, most compact. You'll definitely feel it in your pocket. And also the uh, plasticky body and this sort of go faster stripe on the back may not be to everyone's taste. Although in this cobalt blue color, I think it's actually pretty snazzy looking. Also, the camera isn't really anything to write home about. The 64 megapixel main lens is perfectly fine in good light. Plus we get an ultra wide lens and it's probably one of the better camera setups uh, that I'm gonna show you today. But the added depth and macro lenses don't really add much overall. And I think the quality is fine, but not the best. But I think overall for 200 quid, the X3 NFC is a really good option. And apparently even, uh, Fred's given it his seal of approval. What do you think? Why is it called NFC? Well, apparently uh, they actually sell the X3 in some regions without NFC, I think in India, uh, to save some money, which is why here in the UK and other parts of the world, it's uh, got the very catchy name of Poco X3 NFC. Good question, Fred. Sticking with Poco, and another option is the brand new M3, which I've seen as low as 114 pounds on Gearbest, but also 200 pounds on Amazon. Either way, it's supposed to be a cheaper version of the X3, with what I actually think is a slightly nicer design, along with that big slab of glass for the camera module. Downsides, it's not as powerful, we don't get the 120Hz screen, and the camera's had a bit of a downgrade, but we do get an even bigger 6,000 mAh battery. So the M3 is definitely worth considering, especially if you are on a tighter budget, but I think uh, the X3 is a sort of better all-rounder. All right, so next up, we've got the Xiaomi Mi 10 T light, not exactly the catchiest name in the world, uh, but this is a great option. Okay, technically this is slightly over our budget, but I've seen it on sale for 200, and I think even at the full price, what you're getting with the Mi 10 T light is ridiculously good value for money. But it's also the only one that supports 5G, and while that may not be a big deal right now for some of you, it could come in handy over the next couple of years. But the Mi 10T Lite shares the same big 120Hz screen, the same 6 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage as the Poco X3, although the X3 does have a slightly bigger battery, and also the ultra-wide and the selfie cameras are higher megapixels, and also depending on where you're buying it, it may be a touch cheaper. But there's a lot to like here. Gorilla Glass 5 on the front and back, stereo speakers, a fingerprint reader on the side which doubles as a power button, and also we get fast 33 watt charging and a pretty hefty 4820 milliamp hour battery. While this and the X3 are both great options, for my money I would probably pay it a little bit extra depending on where you buy it uh, and go for this just because that extra performance also the 5G makes it a little bit more future proof uh, and I think I just personally prefer this slightly smarter design than, uh, where is it, the, uh, as I say, the go faster stripe on the back of the X3. But all things and maybe all prices being equal, which one would you go for between these two? Let me know in the comments below. Speaking of the Mi series though, I actually recently reviewed its bigger and fancier brother, the Mi 10T Pro. Now this one is definitely closer to flagship territory, although they do have some good deals on it. But if you've got a slightly bigger budget, then definitely check it out. All right, moving on, and I want to show you guys the Moto G9 Play. Motorola offers so many different phones, it's actually kind of confusing, but now we have the latest G9 Play, and it costs about £150. One of the big selling points here for me is the software. It's pretty close to stock Android 10, so there's not much bloatware or anything to slow it down. It's a lovely phone to use, but for the £50 or so you're saving over the Poco or the Mi 10T Lite, there are quite a few compromises. The screen is just HD rather than a full HD, so it's not sharp. It's also got a less powerful Snapdragon 662. On the plus side, it's not quite as big as the last few phones with a 6.5 inch screen. 
the bezels are nice and thin, the design is certainly eye-catching, and we get a big 5,000 mAh battery, so no worries there. The 48 megapixel triple camera setup on the back is also pretty reasonable, but again, the macro and the depth are a bit pointless. Although the main and the ultra wide cameras do perform well in good light, but as is pretty much the case with all the phones here, it does start to struggle in low light. But I think overall, if you're after a cheap and cheerful phone, I don't think any of those are deal breakers, and so the Moto G9 Play is definitely worth considering. Now the next phone I want to show you is the Oppo A5 2020. Uh, and as I've been researching this video, normally this will cost you about £150 or so, but actually from pretty much all the retailers I checked, you can get this for just £99, which actually makes this the cheapest phone in this roundup. So the A5 packs in the same Snapdragon 665, 5K battery and 6.5 inch HD screen as the Moto G9 Play, but the camera and the software is different and we also have more storage here. Now depending on your point of view, this either looks kind of dull and boring, or in my opinion at least, a bit more subtle and sophisticated. Not every phone has to be eye-catching, so I kind of like the look of this thing. Battery is also fantastic on this, but we are limited to just 10 watt charging, which means it takes several hours to fully charge. I must admit, it does feel like one of the slower phones I'm testing. The small amount of RAM means that few apps can stay open in the background, so they often have to fully reopen when I switch back. As for the camera, we get a 12 megapixel main lens, 8 megapixel ultra wide, and the usual kind of pointless depth and macro lenses. We do get 4K video here, but without stabilization, so you'll probably want to stick to 1080p. Also, the A5 doesn't offer any kind of night mode, which is a bit of a shame. So not exactly the most exciting phone, and that 3 gigs of RAM on the base model may hold you back if you are a bit of a power user or do lots of multitasking, but for that discounted price of £100, it's an absolute steal. Which phone should we do next? Mm -hmm. No, we've done that one. Okay, okay, yeah, good idea. All right, so next phone, Realme 7, <laughs> which comes in at just under 200 pounds here in the UK. So I actually recently reviewed this and its fancier brother, the 7 Pro, uh, although the Pro is 270 pounds, so a bit over our budget, although you do get an AMOLED screen and a slightly better camera with that. But I think the 7 is the sweet spot, because not only do we get a 6.5 inch 90 hz screen, it's also Full HD, unlike the previous Oppo and Moto phones. We get the usual quad camera setup here, but the 48 megapixel main lens is actually pretty decent, as well as a big 5000 mAh battery, and I think overall it's quite a smart looking phone with this two-tone finish. Now inside we have a MediaTek processor, the uh, Helios G95 to be exact, and your first thought is probably, ew, MediaTek, but actually it's pretty neck and neck in terms of CPU performance uh, compared to the Snapdragon 720G, and actually faster when it comes to graphics and gaming. Plus we have the 90Hz screen, so this is actually a pretty decent budget gaming phone. It's kind of surprising just how many good options there are for under £200. Also, the Nokia 5.3 is a great option, especially as we get stock Android with this, which, all bells and whistles aside, the software is incredibly important, so I think the Nokia is definitely worth a look. But in terms of which one I would actually pick and use as my daily driver, I think it would probably be a tie between the X3 and the Mi 10 T Lite. But what do you think? From everything I've shown you today, which one would you go for? And if I have missed out on any other great budget options, do let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you want to see more from me, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And I'll catch you next time right here on The Tech Chat.